Hi and welcome to Finance Basics 11 from TeachExcel.com. Here I'm going to show you how to perform annuity due calculations with the present value and future value functions in Excel. Now all an annuity due means is that the payments come at the beginning of the year. By default everything's going to be calculated as if they came at the end of the year. All we're doing here is changing them from the end of the year to the beginning of the year or more specifically from the end of the period to the beginning of the period. All the examples here, the periods will be equal to one year or each period will be one year but uh, in other examples one period could be a month or a day or a quarter. So it's end of the period to the beginning of the period. It's basically all it is. And the only thing we need to actually change is the type argument right here in the back of the function. So this is the future value function, and we're going to use that right now to solve this problem right here. So how much will you have in 10 years if you invest $1,000 per year at the beginning of each year with a 5% interest rate? All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the future value like we've done in uh, all the previous examples, equals FV, open parentheses. Now, first thing, let's make sure that our periods are uh, all equal. Okay, so the interest rate is um, by default set for one year, 5% interest rate. Our periods are all in years, so we're good with that. Now the rate is simply 5% right here. So we simply put 0.05 in for that. Remember, you gotta keep the percentage as a decimal here, comma, number of periods, 10, comma. For the payment, you're going to invest $1,000 every year. So you are going to put a thousand for the payment. Remember the payment is what you're going to fill in when you're dealing with annuities because it's going to be an equal series or an equal um, amount of cash flows over periods of time. Now comma for the present value you can either put a zero there or simply leave it blank and insert a comma. The comma just means that we move on to the very next argument, which is the type argument. So the type argument is bold down there. Now the reason we don't have anything for present value is because it doesn't say so in the problem. We're just going to be investing $1,000 every year. So you only put something in for the annuity. Now the type is where you um, tell the function that it's going to be an annuity due. You can either put a 0 or a 1 here. We want to put a 1. By default, it's going to be zero. So if you leave it blank, it's zero. What that means is that it's going to assume that the annuity is paid in at the end of the period. In this case, it would be at the end of the year. By putting a one here, it tells the function that it's going to be an annuity due. So the payment will be at the beginning of the period, or here, the beginning of the year. So we put a close parentheses, and I'm going to go ahead and put a negative sign in front of the future value here, just so we get a positive number. If you've um, watched the other Finance Basics tutorials, you know there are a couple different ways to do this. I prefer in simple cases like this to put the negative in front of the future value function. So we see that the future value is $13,206.79. Now if it was not an annuity due, watch how that changes. So you can see it goes down significantly. So you make a lot more money if you're going to deposit it at the beginning of the year because you get the extra year for compounding interest. So that's how you can do that with the future value function. I'll leave it here just for a second. We have the rate right here, number of periods, payment. Most important part is the one at the very end. That is for the type argument, tells it it's going to be an annuity due. All right, so let's go ahead and do this for the present value function as well. Now, the present value function is pretty much exactly the same as the future value, just a little bit different. So I've got the present value function right here. The only difference between this and the future value is we have an FV for future value right here, whereas up here, it's present value. So that's the only difference, because really one is just the inverse of the other. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem that we've got here. This is uh, probably a little bit more similar to something you might read if you're taking a test. 
calculate the present value of an annuity due of $1,200 with a 3.75% interest rate for 10 years. So in this case, it simply says annuity due. So it doesn't tell us up front that the payments are going to be made at the beginning of the year instead of the end of the year. This is where you have to remember that annuity due means payments at the beginning of the year. It's a very or beginning of the period, I'm sorry. In this case, our periods aren't years. But it means annuity due, payment at the beginning of the period. Don't forget that. Especially when you're taking tests, they're going to try and trip you up by using annuity due instead of just saying beginning of the period or beginning of the year. So let's go ahead and get the present value for this. Equals PB, open parentheses. What is our rate? Well, quite simply, 3.75%. Make sure to put that in as a decimal, 0.0375, comma. What's our number of periods? Well, everything is in years here, so it makes it really easy for us. Periods are in 10. Now, what's the payment? Well, the payment here is our annuity due. So worded a little bit differently, but it's $1,200. So $1,200. Now, comma, our future value. Well, we don't have anything to put for that. So we simply want to either put a zero. No, you don't want to put a zero, sorry. For this particular problem, just put a comma. All that that says is that you don't have anything to put in there. It's an optional argument anyway, so it's OK. And then for type, just like we did for the future value, you'll want to put a 1 right here. If you leave it blank or you enter 0, by default, it's going to automatically assume that the payments come at the end of the period. So putting the 1, payments, it tells it that payments come at the beginning of the period. Close the parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and make it a positive number by putting a negative sign here. And hit Enter. So we can see that the present value of this is $10,224.92. And so that's really all there is to calculating um, annuity dues with present values and future values. Uh, problems could be more or less complicated than this, but really the only important part when in Excel is to make sure that you have the one right here for the type argument. Also remember, type argument is at the end. So you're going to have to put something or leave it blank for the future value or present value argument right here. These arguments have little brackets around them, mean they are optional. So just remember, leave this guy blank if you need to, put another comma, then put one for type. That's all you have to do to turn a regular annuity problem into an annuity due problem in Excel. So that's it for the annuity due tutorial here.